Hello ladies and gents. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the Onshape interface. So if we start at the top of the window, when you've created a project, you'll see that most of the documents uh, are given the name Untitled Document. If you click that, you can then type over it. So I'm just gonna call this one My Project. You can give it a name, press Enter, and then you've renamed your workspace. So you can find it easily later on when you want to work in it again. Um, below that, we have a series of tools. We've got a sketch button, and that's gonna be really important in a second. And next to it, we have a series of other tools, and these all allow us to manipulate 3D objects uh, and do a few other things. Below that, we have uh, something called the feature list or the feature tree. Uh, there's nothing really in it at the moment other than the, the origin point, which as I hover the mouse cursor over it, you can see it's highlighted in orange in the main section of the window um, and the workspace the top plane, the front plane, and the right plane. And as I hover my mouse cursor, you can see that those were highlighted in orange as well. So below that, we have the parts list. Now, I haven't created any 3D objects, so right now the parts list is empty, and you can see there's a zero there for no parts in the project. So um, when I'm talking about these planes, what do I mean? So the top, front, and right planes, these are the um, overlapping squares in the main window. And these are the planes that you can draw on. So you can draw on the top plane, uh, the front plane, or the right plane. And if we look to the uh, right-hand side of the screen, we've got the view cube. So the view cube allows us to click on the different planes and change the view of the camera. Uh, you can rotate the camera manually by holding the right mouse button and then just moving the mouse cursor around to manipulate that but it's often much easier to just click on the view that you want. So if I click on the left of the view cube, we can see right, and that's been reversed. So we're looking on the, at the right plane from behind, um, like looking through a window. Uh, if I just rotate that around, I can go to the back view, or I can click on the corner of the view cube to switch to the isometric view, um, and I can move it around by clicking on the arrows as well. So there's lots of ways to manipulate the camera. Um, but if it ever gets a little bit unwieldy, you can just click back on one of the um, sides of the view cube to reposition the camera to something that's easier to work with. So if I just switch from an orthographic view to an isometric view here, uh, all I'm going to do now is click on this sketch button. Now you'll see when I click this button, the look of all of the tools will change. If I just click sketch, um, and then I'm going to click on one of the planes and I want to basically apply a piece of paper to these planes that I can sketch on. And you can see we've got this blue box at the top that says select the sketch plane. So when I hover the mouse cursor over the front plane, it's highlighted in orange. So if I click that, you've seen that uh, landscape piece of paper or uh, window that's been applied over that front plane. We can now sketch on this to create the beginning of a 3D model. Now it's very hard to sketch in an isometric view. So what I'm going to do is click on the front of the view cube. So I'm looking at this head on in an orthographic view. So I'm going to use these tools which have all switched from 3D modeling tools to sketching tools. So these are all for use when you are creating 2D sketches. So I'm just going to use the center point rectangle. I'm going to go to the origin point on the front plane, click, move the mouse cursor outward, and I've got, it, it's almost a square, but not quite. Um, so what I'm going to do is make sure it's a perfect square. So I'll click the dimension tool, click on the edge of my uh, shape, move the mouse cursor outward, and I'll round that down to four centimeters. And you can see right now the edges are blue. So if I just press enter, uh, they change to black. And if I just do that again here, um, I'll leave that at four and then press enter. And you can see that the whole square now, um, it's four by four, and the sides are all black, which means it's fully constrained. So if I make changes to different parts of this, let's say I try to move it around the screen to, to a different position, um, it wouldn't lose its shape or become deformed in any way. So making sure that your sketches are constrained can be very important and on shape. You don't have to constrain your sketches, but it can be much easier to work with things later on if you do. Uh, so what I'll do is I will add one more um, piece to this sketch. So I'll use the um, center point circle and I'll draw a circle 
in the center there. And you can see that's blue, that isn't constrained. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll add a dimension to this like that, press enter just to apply that and it's changed to black. Now the dimensions are always set. So if I change the size of, let's say, the rectangle to six centimeters in height, the size of the circle won't change with it. So everything stays the way it should be. And that's why you need to constrain things in, uh, in Onshape if you can. Um, so finally, I'm just going to give this sketch a name. So I'm going to just call it my shape. That will do just for the sake of this project. And then click the green check mark to apply that. And now you can see that the tools have switched back to the, uh, the 3D modeling tools. So what I'm going to do here is use the extrude tool to click on the shape here and give it some thickness like that. And if I just rotate the camera a bit, you can see that the extrusion um, has been added and I can make it bigger or smaller by dragging the arrow or changing the size in the box like that. Um, and then when you're happy with that, you can click on the green check mark or you can continue to uh, change the size of the extrusion. But when you're happy with it, you can just click the green check mark to apply that. So there we go. I've just got a uh, rectangle um, with a hole running through the center of it. And that's now a part. So you can see now I have a part in the part list. And if I click on the eye icon, I can hide that part and it's gone. Um, and click on the eye again to bring it back. Uh, click on the front of the view cube to look at it from the front and it just looks like a 2D shape there. And as you move um, the camera, we can check out our 3D model. Now you can see that the sketch has disappeared. So the sketch has been hidden once I turned it into a 3D model. I can bring the sketch back by clicking on show my shape. So just click on that little eye icon in the um, feature tree. So if I click that, it brings the sketch back and you can see it's got this like dotted line. So that's where the sketch was. Um, and I can go back into the sketch if I want. So if I double click on my shape, um, click back on the front of the view cube, I can now go in and make further changes to the sketch. So I'm just going to add um, a corner rectangle at the top here like that. And I will give this a size of, let's say, three centimeters and um, I'll give it a height of three centimeters as well like that um, and then I can click on the green check mark and you can see that there's part of that sketch now that's not been extruded so what I can do is go back to the extrude tool click on that new shape and I can extrude that separately there we go uh, and then when I'm happy with that I can click on the green check mark so now you can see that I've got two extrusions. I've got the first extrusion for the main part that I created first, and then I have the second extrusion. And you can just double click on those and go into them individually. And that's the nice thing about Onshape. When you make a change, um, they're all listed in the feature tree, and you can go back in and edit them later on. And so it's really useful when you need to go in and make quick edits that you can track the changes and the progress that you've made in your project and change things later. Um, and you just double click them to go back into them, uh, make the edits that you need to make. And then when you're happy with that, you can click the green check mark. And if you've made a mistake and you don't want to save those changes, you can just click on the, um, the little red X and it closes out without um, saving any of the changes that you've just made. So that's it, that's the interface. So all you need to remember is to name your project, um, you start every 3D model as a sketch and the tools switch between the 3D modeling tools to uh, the sketching tools once you've created a sketch. So I'm just gonna show you um, that again. If I go to the right plane this time, um, I can click on the sketch button. And what I'll do now is I'll apply a sketch to the right plane. And I'm just going to uh, make a quick circle here like that. So that's a completely separate sketch. I'm just going to call this one um, circle sketch and then click the green check mark. And as I rotate around, you can see that sketch is on a completely different plane. We've got sketch on the front plane and a sketch on the right plane. So what I can do now is I can click on the extrude button and extrude that separately. And I'll just give that a name. I'll call that extrude cylinder. 
And it really helps to name all of the things that you do in on shape so you can keep track of them uh, as your projects get larger and more complicated. Uh, so what I can do now is I can look at the part tree and you can see I've got part one, which is the first thing that I created. And I have another part here, part two, which is the cylinder. Now, if we just look at the bottom of the screen, you can see we've got two tabs, part studio and assembly. So I've got these two parts. I'm going to go into the assembly window and now I can click on the insert button and you can see this parts list appears and what's nice about the assembly window is you can create all of your parts in the parts studio and then when you want to move things around and put things together it's much easier to do it as an assembly so if I just click on part one and part two it puts them in the, in the same position that they are in in, uh, in the project and remember, you can zoom in and out by just rotating the, uh, the mouse wheel forwards or backwards to zoom in or out. And now I can just uh, click on the green check mark to close that insert window. And what I can do here is click and drag the parts in 3D space like that. It's much easier to move them around in the assembly window than it is in the part studio. Um, so as I move this around, what I could do if I want is double click and we actually get these um, transform tools that appear. So if I just click on the front of the view cube, that's still available and I'll zoom out a bit. Um, I can click on these and move them more precisely because it can be difficult to move them around in 3D space and uh, make them very precise if you're not using this tool, if you're just doing it freehand. Um, and this one allows me to rotate it like that or you could type in the degrees box instead. So I could type in, let's say, um, 50 degrees, press enter and it will rotate. Um, so the assembly window is uh, really useful for positioning everything around. And if you want to go back to your um, part studio, you just click on the part studio tab and you can go back here like that. Now you can move things around in um, the part studio where you actually create your 3D models but it's uh, a little bit more cumbersome. So if I wanted to move um, the cylinder that I created, if I just go to the right view um, and go into the sketch, so if I, uh, I'll reveal that sketch, I'll just double click it. What I can do is drag a box around it like that. And then I can go to the transform tool and I can move it around, but it's not quite as, and I can make it bigger as well or smaller but it's not quite as easy to use, I don't think, as it is to move things in the assembly window. So if I just click on the green check mark to apply that, you can see I've resized it, moved it around. Um, so you can do that both ways. So that's it. That's a, just a very quick introduction to the Onshape interface. Uh, you just need to remember the key points that 3D models start as sketches and you can go back into the feature tree and change everything later on by double clicking and reopening those, those different actions and keeping track of your parts, which you can then add together and move around in the assembly window. That's it. Okay, so uh, with, um, with that all covered, let's move on to creating some projects, some 3D models using the different Onshape tools.